Welcome everyone, my name's Sylph, and this is my attempt to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Pearl using only normal type Pokemon. As always, if you want to join in on these challenges live, make sure to follow me on Twitch. The link will be in the description below. Now why choose Pearl over Diamond, you might ask? Well, there's one simple reason. Both games are kind of limited in the number of normal types that they have, with just the ones on screen being available, since we don't allow legendaries of course, so no Arceus or Regigigas, unfortunately. However, Pearl has the potential for just one additional Pokemon, Glammeow, which is completely unobtainable in Diamond. Why normal types, you might ask? Well, you'll see. Let's just say this took a lot of theory crafting, as parts of this challenge look ridiculous on the face of it. Those of you who have seen my videos before, or hardcore Nuzlocke in general, know the rules, but I'll put them on screen so you can pause and check them out if you want. This run is going to be absolutely insane, so buckle in and let's get into it. Since there are no normal type starters, we have to start with something else, so I grab a Piplup. After getting Pokeballs from Dawn, our encounters officially start, and our very first is a Starly on Route 202, which we catch and nickname Bruno. Bruno ends up having a Lonely Nature, which is plus attack and minus defense, which isn't too bad at all. Could have been much worse, that's for sure. After carefully grinding Bruno to level 5 against level 2s in this route, we head to Route 201, where we can safely get our next encounter, which ends up being a level 2 Bidoof. The capture is successful, and we nickname her Hash Brown. I mean, it's somewhat fitting, but I was also literally eating hash browns at the time, so I can't say that that didn't have an influence on my decision making. Unfortunately, Hash Brown has one of the worst natures possible, Timid, which cuts its attack in favor of its speed. Given the challenge we have up ahead, I was honestly thinking that this alone might end our run, but I pushed on nonetheless. On Route 203 comes our first major challenge, a battle against Larry. Yes, Larry. Our rival. He starts with a level 7 Starly, and the Quick Claw we received in Jubilife activates on our first turn, which is really nice. Bidoof gets a lot of attack drops from Growl and misses a tackle as well, but we're able to take down the Starly with a decent chunk of health left. Now that our attack is lowered so much, I decide to go for Growl on Turtwig so we can safely switch in Starly. Turtwig starts using Withdraw to increase his defense, and Quick Attack is starting to do very little damage. Turtwig's tackle is looking like a 4-hit KO on us though, so this is looking bad. He eventually gets Starly down to 5 HP, and I realized I'm kind of forced to switch back into Bidoof or else Starly gets sacked. Amazingly, he goes for Withdraw again so we can get a free switch, then good old Hash Brown eventually whittles down Turtwig, but our last attack brings it to literally 1 HP, but it goes for Withdraw, then we miss our next tackle at the crucial moment, but he goes for Withdraw again, opening up for the KO. Oh my god. That was way too close. Hash Brown is a god. I'm not asking any questions. But now is the hard part, and one of the most questionable parts of this run from when I was researching it. Gym Leader Rourke. Rourke has three Rock-type Pokemon, levels 12 to 14, which for normal types is terrifying. And we have four things go wrong here. Number one, while researching, I noticed that we had access to Route 218 so we could catch a Glammeow. However, I forgot that there's just water there and that the grass is actually on the other side. So we only have two Pokemon and Glammeow gets Hypnosis at level 13, which I was planning to use. Number two, while we did get Rock Smash from Orberg Gate, which is a super effective move with a good chance to lower the opponent's defense, of course, I find out during a scary battle with Wild Onyx that Bidoof has the Unaware ability, which cancels out any stat changes the opponent has, including beneficial ones. Number three, the level cap for Rourke is 14, and Bidoof would evolve at level 15. We're one level away from getting a powerful evolution with the water type of all things. Ugh. And finally, Bidoof's timid nature is trash. Sorry, Hash Brown. But nonetheless, we decide to go for it and grind both to level 14, where Starly evolves into Staravia, where it also gets the Intimidate ability, so that's something. Since both my Glammeow Hypnosis and Rock Smash defense drop strats failed, I go for the craziest one of all. To start, I send out Bidoof and go for Defense Curl to try and get us ready for the Onslaught. Geodude goes for Stealth Rock, which is not good for Staravia. I go for Defense Curl again, but unfortunately Geodude's first Rock Throw gets a crit and does well above half. Are you kidding me? Now I'm forced to start my strategy early, which is Rollout. Now Rollout actually doubles in power if you use Defense Curl on the previous turn, so I'm hoping we can build this up for massive, albeit resisted damage. The first one does, like, nothing, and Geodude hits us again to bring us to 11 HP. Rollout starts building up, and we get down to 5 HP, but miraculously, the Geodude misses its rock throw that would've KO'd so we can take it down with our fourth rollout. 
Oh my god, this is impossible. Onyx comes out next, and Onyx actually has a base speed of 70, so it outspeeds us with Rock Throw, but we survive on just 3 HP, and Resisted Rollout takes it out in one singular hit. Holy absolute f***. Kranidos comes out next, and we have no rollouts next, but Kranidos uses Leer, and then we hit it with Rock Smash, which lowers its defense, which will actually count if Staravia is in. Then, Ash Brown gets taken down by a Pursuit. That is a rough loss. Staravia's switch in intimidates the Kranidos, but then we get hurt by the Stealth Rocks. Wing Attack brings Kranidos low, it hits us with Pursuit, then Rourke uses a Potion, but we can attack twice in a row to take it down. My god, we actually beat Rourke with two level 14 normal or flying Pokemon. I didn't think we'd get this far, especially not after that first turn crit. Losing a crucial Pokemon like a potential B-Barrel with water typing is not good given the limited normal types in this game, but let's keep this train rolling. Our next big challenge comes at the Valley Windworks where Commander Mars has a powerful Perugly. This is an extraordinarily close battle, and we couldn't intimidate it since she has a Zubat first, and we can't re-switch in Staravia since he's our only Pokémon. But amazingly, we pull it off within range of just one more attack thanks to a held Orenberry. The problem is, we had to grind up to make that possible, and now we risk overleveling Staravia past the level cap and ending the run. After a few accidental trainer encounters, including a hiker with Geodudes, we make it to the Eterna Forest at literally level 22, the level cap, where we can finally get our next encounter, a Buneary. Unfortunately, we do have Cheryl with us, so we have to take out her Chansey so it doesn't egg bomb our run savior. Sorry, Cheryl. We successfully catch Buneary and nickname it Thumper. Unfortunately, it does have Klutz as an ability, which means any held items we use on it won't do a single thing. Ugh, that is so bad. Q-Charm would have been miles better. At this point, we can only use Thumper until the next gym, so we have to be very careful. The run through Eterna Forest goes smoothly with only Thumper, and he comes out at almost level 18. Using my trainer ID, I've calculated that the honey tree outside of Eterna City here is one of our four potential Munchlax trees, but I'm not getting my hopes up since it's like a 1% chance, but we could also get lucky enough to get an Apom, so I slather honey on it and hope for the best. About six hours of playtime from now. The Grass-type Eterna Gym isn't too scary for us, but we can't use Staravia until Gardenia because of the level cap. Thumper manages the trainers quite well with frustration though, since it has low friendship since we caught it recently. It's time for our second gym leader battle, and Gardenia starts off with a Cherubi that gets KO'd by one wing attack from Bruno. Turtoid comes out next and gets one hit KO'd by even a non-crit wing attack. Last is Roserade, which actually outspeeds us and goes for Grass Knot, and we hit it hard with wing attack and get a crit to take it out. Thank god. That thing could have very well paralyzed us and done some damage without speeding and its citrus berry causing issues, but that was pretty lucky. Second gym badge acquired. Our next challenge comes in the form of the Team Galactic Headquarters, where we have to face Commander Jupiter. I come up with a strat putting an Orenberry on Staravia, and I use Buneary first to take out the Zubat with Frustration. Then, the level 20 Skun Tank comes out. I keep Buneary in to hit it with Frustration, and it does not do much, but thankfully its Screech move misses. I use Frustration again to break its Citrus Berry, which brings it right to half. It uses Night Slash and does huge damage, so now's the time to switch into Staravia for the Intimidate and to take it down with Wing Attack. But Skun Tank gets a crit on its first Night Slash against Staravia, and it takes it down in one hit since the Intimidate doesn't count and our Orenberry can't even activate. We had strategized and set this battle up so damn well, and down goes what is likely to be our best Pokemon of the run. Damn. I send in Thumper pretty much knowing the run is over, Frustration fails to take it out, and then it uses Smokescreen, allowing us to rebound with the KO. We now have just Buneary on our team heading into the third gym. I was just about to give in, but figured, you know what, we've made it this far. Ash Brown and Bruno can have died for nothing. Let's press on and see what happens. The next route, Route 211, allows us to find a Hoot Hoot encounter at night, which, I mean, is something, and it gives us a tinge of hope leading into Maylene's gym. We nickname it... well, I mean, is there any other nickname we could have gone with? Thanks, Twitch chat. One of my mods, specifically. After a long, terrifying, and very lucky stretch of routes, we make it to Heart Home where we can technically get our next encounter, an egg, which will hatch a Hapini for us. Unfortunately, I completely forgot about Barry running into us here, but thankfully at least I had healed beforehand. We take out the Starly, taking a bit of damage, his Buizel uses Growl on us before we can take it out, which is not good at all, and in comes Grottle. Thankfully, Hoot Hoot is at least a good switch in here, and Grottle goes for Withdraw on the switch. Hypnosis puts him to sleep, and I use Reflect to help us, so we're able to take him down pretty safely. Ponyta is his last Pokémon, and we whittle it down with Confusion for the win. 
That could have been dangerous. While traveling on Route 210, we actually encounter a wild Chansey, which I had completely forgotten about since I knew that we had the Hapini egg earlier on, but it still hasn't hatched, so technically this is fair game. Which is nice since it's higher leveled and doesn't require the Oval Stone evolution. We successfully catch it with the help of Hypnosis and call it Over Easy. Hopefully that's a good omen for this insane run. I attach the experience share to Chansey as well so that it can level up and take some experience away from our other two Pokemon which are getting quite close to the level cap already. Another long stretch of routes with incredibly close calls and we make it to our final challenge before the next gym, these two Ace Trainers. Unfortunately, we're waiting to evolve Hoot Hoot at level 29 since he gets Air Slash before evolving that way, but we can't risk leveling him up too much because of the level cap of level 30 since we'll be using him for basically all the trainers in Meilin's gym. So we have to go into this with him unevolved, and same with Buneary whose friendship is looking good enough to evolve, but we just can't risk it. Amazingly, we defeat both of the Ace Trainers, including one with Monferno and Gyarados, thanks to a combination of Hoot Hoot's Hypnosis and Reflect, combined with the Shockwave TM, which we used on Buneary specifically for this Gyarados. Gyarados, and perhaps for the following gym too. It's time, one of the biggest challenges we face so far, Maylene's fighting type gym with a normal type team. Rourke and his rock types just resisted us and hurt Staravia bad, but now Maylene's entire gym is actively super effective against us aside from Hoot Hoot. Knowing we'll absolutely need our two evolutions, we get Hoot Hoot to level 29 who finally learns Air Slash before then evolving into a Noctowl. Hopefully the wait will have been worth it. Buneary also successfully evolves into Lopunny, meaning our friendship level reached the threshold just in time. Now that Lopunny actually likes us, I also grab the Return TM from the Lost Tower. Maylene's gym is kind of complicated, and I make sure to dodge as many of these trainers as I can, and we end up only having to battle two of them before the big challenge. After attaching an Orenberry to Noctowl, it's time to put my strategy to the test. She starts out with a Metatite, which is an easy KO with Air Slash. Machoke comes out next, and this is where I decide to put it to sleep with Hypnosis, which opens up an opportunity to get Reflect up to help with her next Pokemon. Our strategy goes well, thank god, since even a first Hypnosis miss would have likely ended our chances, and in comes Lucario. With Reflect up, we tank a Metal Claw quite well, after which we successfully hit another Hypnosis. Air Slash does a bit less than half, and then our next one breaks its Citrus Berry, but it doesn't quite KO. Our Reflect wears off, but incredibly he stays asleep for another turn and Air Slash just barely takes him out. Unbelievable. If we had missed either of those Hypnosises, or if Lucario had waken up any earlier, that would have been dangerous, especially with Drain Punch. Three badges, baby. Now the experience here on Chansey is doing well for us, but there's one problem. The level cap for Maylene was 30, but the level cap for Wake, the next gym leader, is also 30. Yup. Thankfully, new encounters finally open up at this point. In Mount Coronet, we can catch a 5% Cleffa, which we nicknamed Kirby. Then on Route 214, just before Pistoria City, we can find a Giraffarig, which we nicknamed Jeffrey. These two are absolute saviors since we can use Giraffarig a lot in the next couple routes and put the experience share on Cleffa, that way we're avoiding the level cap on the others. Our next encounter comes in the Great Marsh, and it's Azuro, who we won't be able to evolve since he loses his normal type. At the worst, I figure he might be a good pivot since we're on set mode, or a sack if we need one, but he actually flees after the first ball. So, uh, forget it. We didn't want you anyway, you blue ball piece of sh**. Since Cleffa is our lowest level Pokemon and learned Magical Leaf, she's actually decent against the gym trainers and she eventually evolves into a beautiful Clefairy. The team finally looks like it's starting to build up now, but there's one more thing we can do. I end up teaching Giraffe Egg Thief so that we can hit up Mount Coronet and use it on any Cleffas we can find to hopefully get a Moonstone. It's a 5% chance to get a Cleffa and a 5% chance that a Cleffa will be holding the Moonstone, so after a while we find one and evolve Clefairy into a beastly Clefable. It's time to battle Wake himself. Wake starts off with a Gyarados, and I lead with Noctowl to try our Hypnosis and Reflect strategy against it, especially since we don't get affected by Intimidate. We successfully land Hypnosis on the first turn, and Reflect goes up on the next, after which I decide to switch into Lopunny, who still has Shockwave. Unfortunately, Gyarados wakes up right away on the switch and hits Lopunny with Dragon Rage, which remains unaffected by the Reflect anyway. Not good. I'm forced to stay in here, so I go with Shockwave, which does less than half, and he hits us with Dragon Rage again, bringing us to just 4 HP, which I realized was probably the most it could have done with the Reflect Up. I switch back into Noctowl here and take a free Brine, but it doesn't do a whole lot. I go for Air Slash, which seems to be a 2-hit KO from here, and he hits us with Dragon Rage for below half, but our Orenberry activates, thankfully. But Wake uses a Super Potion on it. Uh-oh. I reset the Reflect Up and use Hypnosis again, which lands, thank god. 
At this point, I figure Air Slash is the best bet, since even if it did wake up, it could possibly flinch too, but it doesn't end up waking up at all so we can take it down. That was scary. Because Wake's Floatzel has Ice Fang, he's now sent in, which is not good because I prepared us for a Quagsire switch here, but our strategy got messed up due to the early wake up on Low Punny. Even though he has Pursuit, I risk the switch into Clefable, thinking Ice Fang is coming, but he actually goes for Brine here. He then goes for Ice Fang on Clefable, and gets the flinch. Dear lord, this is terrifying. Thankfully, he just goes for Swift here, but it brings us directly to half after our berry, 50 HP out of 100, which means Brine would still get a power boost and might take us out now. I hit it with Magical Leaf and its Citrus Berry activates, and now we are in a brutal position. Realizing we can't switch anyway, I go for Magical Leaf and it just barely doesn't take Floatzel out, but amazingly it just uses Swift. We are definitely KO'd here, but we can't risk Pursuit anyway, so I go for one more Magical Leaf, and Wake goes for a Super Potion here. That actually saved us since it puts him in range of a Magical Leaf. That was insane. Could have been the end of the run to be honest. Quagsire is then an easy KO with Magical Leaf from there. Kirby is a monster. Badge number 4 in the books. After a battle with a couple of galactic goofballs, Chansey's experience share gives it another level and it actually likes us now and evolves into Blissey. There's no such thing as an Eviolite in this game, so Blissey is definitely the better option. All our current members are now fully evolved. Beautiful. Another easy rival fight and we encounter this Cynthia person again. Honestly, it seems like she's following us everywhere. I think she might have a crush on us or something. Ah oh, well, I'm sure she won't turn into that big of a problem on our journey. Before heading to the Heart Home Gym, I remembered something. The Shadow Ball TM is accessible before Celestic Town, so I try to make it there since I wasn't sure if it was blocked off, but it turns out it's open at this point. You just can't go past Celestic Town is all. Giraffe Reg is the perfect candidate for Shadow Ball since she's immune to ghost type attacks anyway, so she should be a good counter for Fantina's gym. The trainers in here actually pose a bit of a threat with Gengars and Drift Blims, but a combination of Giraffe Rig and Lopunny Shockwave, which can't miss despite the minimizing Drift Blims, gets the job done. Although we did have some close calls for sure. Now Fantina I'm thinking should be easy enough, although I know from past experiences like running through Platinum with only a Cricketot that we should not underestimate her. I lead with Giraffe Rig against Drip Limb, and it's an easy KO with two Shadow Balls despite its attempt to spam Minimize. Nice. Gengar comes out next and just uses Spite and I go for Psychic for the super effective stab and surprisingly it doesn't kill. It then confuses us with Confuse Ray but we make it through to take down the Gengar. Now this is a little problematic because we're confused heading into her ace, a level 36 Miss Magius. I figure there's no use in switching though, so I stay in and it goes for a Psybeam, which also gets a crit on us. Very unfortunate. Now I forgot we had the Shell Bell on Jeffrey here since I was just thinking, oh, I didn't give it a berry. So I went for Thief thinking I could steal its Citrus Berry, but of course it didn't work. Oof. Miss Magius then goes for Psybeam again and it gets yet another critical hit. Are you kidding me? We're then almost in confusion hit range and we hit ourselves in confusion again, but survive on just 6 HP. Wow. Two crits in a row and two self hits from confusion in a row. My god. Here I switch into Noctowl and we resist the incoming Magical Leaf. It then goes for Psybeam since it outspeeds us and we get an Air Slash off but it doesn't do a whole lot and its Citrus Berry brings it above half. The next Psybeam brings us to just about half health and Air Slash does another chunk of damage. We're getting really damn close, but it's not quite enough, and Noctowl is too low to keep in, so I switch into Kirby now, and Fantina Hyper Potions Miss Magius. Now we're in deep trouble. Psybeam also confuses us on its first turn, and Kirby misses the sing that I tried to get off in desperation. This is insane. Eventually, I get a sweet kiss off to confuse the Miss Magius, and it starts to hurt itself in confusion, but so are we. With Clefable at low health, I switch into Low Punny, but Low Punny is no match despite outspeeding since Shockwave is the only move we can hit it with. With all of our Pokemon at super low health and all being outsped, I have no other choice and I accept what needs to be done. A Blissey Stall. This was absolutely crazy and very risky given that we could have run out of power points first and we kept getting confused, but thankfully we just outlast the Mismagia since it's already been using moves for so long and it eventually just takes itself out with struggle. My god, that was almost an ended run. I can't believe our normal type team did so badly against a ghost gym. To be fair, we did get hacks to absolute death though. F*** you, Fantina. Now that we have Surf, we can finally make it to the other side of Route 218 for our next encounter. You know, the one that I had planned around thinking we could access at the start of the game? We catch a Glammeow and name it Duchess. Glammeow does evolve quite late at level 38, but it should be a solid team member when it does since its stats are surprisingly good. Finally, with a full team, it's time for Byron's Gym. 
Now realizing even some of his trainers have Steelixes, I realized getting the Flamethrower TM would be crucial here, as otherwise we couldn't really put a dent in them. Now that we have Surf, we can actually go north of Floroma Town to the Fuego Ironworks and pick it up. I decided to teach it to Clefable since it has great special attack and is also physically bulky, so it should be a great Steelix killer since it's not a fairy type in this game, of course. Now I have one more strategy that seems crazy on the surface. Buying Focus Blast from the Veilstone department store and teaching it to Blissey to handle Bastiodon. Wild, I know, but hear me out, Bastiodon only has special attacking moves for some reason like Flash Cannon and Ancient Power, so let's give it a shot. Byron leads with Bronzor, so Clefable is a great starter for us. Flamethrower is a 2-hit KO since it doesn't have anything like Heatproof, and it only hit us once with Flash Cannon. Steelix comes out next, and we've faced enough of these in the gym for me to know we'd do fine here, although it doesn't kill and we get hit by Ice Fang before Byron uses a full restore and we can get two hits in a row on it. Bastiodon comes out next, and the only thing I'm fearing is an Ancient Power boost on the Switch, but it just goes for Flash Cannon. It's time to try this. I go for Focus Miss, I mean Focus Blast, and it nearly takes the damn thing out. Bastiodon literally cannot touch us, and we hit another Focus Blast to take it out. I know, I know, two successful Focus Blast hits in a row, impossible. That marks the very first time two consecutive Focus Blasts have hit on camera ever in Earth's history. I promise I'm not hacking. In all seriousness, I'm kind of amazed our strategy worked. Six badges, baby. The momentum is going strong, but we have a tough road ahead. You might have noticed my Pokemon were a bit below the level cap for that battle, and that wasn't by accident. There's a long stretch to Snowpoint City Gym, and I wanted to be careful that we didn't pass level 42 on our Pokemon. Our next task is to boot out Team Galactic from Lake Valor, which they've apparently dried up and left the poor Magikarp to suffocate. They better hope that they don't all get angry and evolve. Commander Jupiter is found inside the cavern, calculating the dimensions to see if he can make a sick pool house for him and his buddies, so we better throw a two-headed giraffe at him, I guess. We also learn Psychic during the battle. It's time for the snowy hellscapes of Route 216 and Route 217. Our very first battle on these routes is a straight-up tragedy. The first trainer has an Ambipom, and we lead with Thumper. And I'm like, ah, this'll be easy, probably a one-hit KO with Jump Kick. But then, Jump Kick misses, and we get huge recoil. I'm still sitting there like, ah, this'll be fine, Ambipom can't do much damage to us, but then it crits us to take Low Putty out. Our longest standing Pokemon, and honestly one of our best with its speed, return, and future type coverage too. This was devastating. Jump Kick has 95% accuracy, which means something that had a 5% chance happened, and then something with a 10% chance happened consecutively. I was so mad. We're down to 5 party members, and all we can get from here will be Chatot from Route 222, or a Munchlax or Apom from a Honey Tree, which are nearly impossible to find. Yikes. In some good news, Duchess evolves into a Perugly, which should sort of be able to fulfill the role that Lopunny did, but with less coverage, I'd imagine. Upon making it to Snowpoint, I realize Candace is going to be a very challenging gym leader, so I get the Silk Scarf from Veilstone to help power up Perugly's stab moves a little bit. But Fable helps with the gym trainers a lot with Flamethrower, and after completing the snow puzzle, I accidentally left the gym like an idiot, which I forgot resets everything. Ugh. Come here, you little snowball pieces of sh**. Candace herself, I'm kind of scared of, and for one reason. She has a random Metacham that I really don't know how to deal with. She starts with a Snover, which is an easy KO with Kirby's Flamethrower. Then the Metacham comes in. Thinking we can bait the fighting move on Clefable, I switch into Noctowl, but she goes for Ice Punch. What the hell, man? Thankfully, we had put a Yachi Berry on Noctowl that we luckily got from the Berry Girl in Pastoria, so he survives, but it does a huge chunk of damage that would definitely kill us now without the Berry and would likely outspeed us on the next turn, too. I switch into Giraffe Rake, thinking I for sure bait the Ice Punch this time around since we've got a Flying type out, but she goes for Force Palm this time around for over half damage. What the absolute f is going on here? Either she has 4000 prediction IQ or is the stupidest AI in the world. Now here we are really stuck since we get outsped no matter what, but eventually I realize there's nothing I can switch into so I risk it with the Shadow Ball and Metacham just goes for bulk up so we can take it out with the boost from our spell tank. Unbelievable. If she had used any other move that would have been the end of the entire run. Sneasel comes out next, which is a bit dangerous, but Clefable is a great switch and takes it out with a flamethrower after taking about half damage. But Shell Bell and our Magic Guard ability help us since we can't get hit by Hail. In comes Abomasnow, and I know we can't switch into anything, so I go for flamethrower and hope for the best. It hits us with Woodhammer, we survive on just 16 HP, go for flamethrower, and it takes it out. 
Oh my god. We were teetering on the edge of losing the entire run throughout that battle, yet we escaped with no deaths. Seven gym badges, let's go. Lake Verity is next where Commander Mars is. Yes, the one who killed our beloved Staravia. I vow to get revenge, and after chat tells me that we were technically supposed to do this battle before the seventh badge, I'm feeling confident. Golbat goes down to Psychic after missing Supersonic, and in comes the Perugly. I switch into Noctowl, and it lands a Hypnosis on us immediately. It hits us with Slash, and I realize we're in crit range now, so I switch into Kirby, who also gets put to sleep. I'm desperately wanting to get the burn off with Flamethrower, but it gets a crit on its next Slash to put Clefable in kill range. This is looking bad, especially since it outspeeds our entire team. I switch into our own Perugly for a catfight, and it hits us hard with Slash. We go for our own Silk Scarf boosted Slash, and it does over half, but the damn thing has a Citrus Berry. Another Slash brings us to KO range, and realizing there's nothing we can switch into, I have to go for it. Another Slash, and it just barely doesn't KO, but she uses Hypnosis, which hits us yet again. At least it wasn't Slash. That was really lucky, but now what? I send in Girafferig, who immediately gets crit by Slash. This entire run could end right here. Everything is either in kill range or asleep, and she outspeeds our entire team. Blissey is somehow our only hope. Upon switch in, we get crit again by Slash, which brings us really low. I have to not get a crit here, and then hit a Focus Blast. Incredibly, Blissey survives a critical hit feint attack on 20 HP, and lands a Focus Blast to end the battle. I have no words, no words at all. Three crits in a row, and three successful hypnosises in a row. That thing is crazy. At the Galactic HQ, I was kind of worried about Cyrus's Murkrow, but the Thunderbolt TM is now accessible via Surf above the Valley Windworks, so we don't have to spend like $100,000 at the game corner. We teach it to Jeffrey, who is now able to make pretty quick work of Murkrow and Golbat, after which Clefable takes care of Sneasel. Fast forward to one of our scariest challenges yet, Spear Pillar. While checking to make sure our team was ready, I actually noticed our Pokemon have Pokerus of all things, which is rarer than finding a 1 in 8192 shiny Pokemon. No idea how this happened, but I'm not complaining as it doubles the EVs that we get. After grinding our team to level 45, it's time for the first challenge up here, a double battle with Barry against two Team Galactic Commanders, Mars and Jupiter. What is this, Sailor Moon? They lead with two Bronzors, and I lead with Giraffereg while Barry sends out Munchlax. Now a huge issue here is that their Bronzors know Light Screen and Reflect, which causes some big issues. After a long back and forth, we're able to take down one of the Bronzors with a bit over half health remaining, and they send in Skuntank. Now I know I definitely don't want both Perugly and Skuntank on the field at the same time, and I decide to switch in Kirby, who gets hit by Night Slash on the switch. We then get hit by Poison Jab, and only manage to get one Flamethrower off on Skuntank, which does not do a whole lot, then Bronzor gets another Light Screen up. Barry then decides to body slam the Bronzor and takes it out in one hit, bringing out the Perugly. An absolute disaster. Why, Barry? Why? The Fable's too low now, so I switch in Duchess here, and thankfully both of them attack Munchlax on the switch. Barry then body slams the Skun Tank, and it paralyzes, but then we get crit by Slash. From here, I go for the body slam on their Perugly, and it paralyzes as well, and the Skun Tank decides to go for Munchlax instead and crits to take it down. But this now sends out his Staraptor, which intimidates both of them. Oh man, incredible. Duchess barely survived that turn. With both of them now paralyzed, and knowing we need to switch, I send in Noctowl, and Barry's Staraptor uses close combat to take Perugly down now that it outspeeds. Their Skun Tank then breaks through Paralysis to hit us with Poison Jab, and poisons us. With nothing left to switch in, I know we have to go for it, so I hit the Skun Tank with Air Slash, since there's now both the Paralysis and Flinch Chance, but Barry doesn't take down the Skuntank and instead goes for the Golbat, then the Skuntank breaks through both Paralysis and the Flinch Chance, and gets a crit Poison Jab to take us down. Poison Jab doesn't even have a high critical hit ratio, how in the world? Hooters goes down. From there, Jeffrey is able to thankfully handle the rest, but that was a brutal loss, especially since Hooters had Reflect. Now here's the thing about Diamond and Pearl. On Spear Pillar, you're sent into battle against Cyrus right after that double battle. You can't leave at all. He leads with Honchkrow, and since we led with Jeffrey against the Commanders, we also have to send him in here. Thankfully, Thunderbolt is indeed a one-hit KO with the help of the Magnet item. Now I was really hoping he'd send out Gyarados here so that we could one-hit KO it as well, but he sends in Weavile right away. Now without the ability to set up Reflect, this is looking disastrous. This thing's coverage is insane. Ice, fighting, dark, and bug moves, wicked speed, and a citrus berry. 
Knowing we'll get outsped and KO'd with a Night Slash, I'm forced to switch into Clefable, and he went for Ice Punch oddly enough, but still does over half. Unbelievable. I have no choice now, and Kirby goes down to a Brick Break. I send in Duchess, who also gets outsped despite his 112 base speed and gets hit by a Night Slash, but no crit, and then Body Slam does a little over half, and Weavile Citrusberry heals it, but no paralysis. It then takes us down with another. Over Easy is then sent out and gets hit by a Brick Break, but we survive so we can go for the 4 times super effective Focus Blast, but we miss. Holy absolute f If that had hit, we could have taken down Crobat and Gyarados with Jeffrey quite easily, but nope. It wasn't meant to be, as Weavile KOs Blissey with Ice Punch, and then Jeffrey is able to take down the Weavile after a couple turns, but since Jeffrey is now low health, we get outsped and taken down by Crobat's Bite. That's the end of the run, and how unlucky it was. Now, I know what you're thinking, so what the hell? And don't worry, this isn't the end. I just wanted to show you guys how painful it can be to have to wipe. With encouragement from Twitch chat, we tried the entire run again from the start and got all the way past the seventh badge and lost against Cyrus yet again. His Weavile having coverage against our entire team, its speed, its Citrus Berry, Gyarados' Intimidate, having to face Cyrus immediately after a double battle where you have to deal with Berry, and the fact that we have to lose one of our Pokemon and bring an HM Pokemon instead in order to get through Mount Coronet, honestly, this might very well be the hardest battle in any challenge that we've done, especially since it's so late game. But... We tried again and got to Spear Pillar for a third time over the course of many weeks and five total attempts before this. I can't even tell you the struggles we went through. After all that, let's see what we can do. This is peak commitment right here. Having lost Bee Barrel, Staravia, and Noctowl on this attempt, I decide to leave Blissey behind in favor of our dead HM Bee Barrel, which we can't send into battle, of course. This time around, we have a secret weapon, though, as we happen to get an Apom finally from one of our Honey Trees, which of course evolved into an Ambipom, which we nicknamed Kong. Against the commanders, I led with our new Clefable named Baby Girl, and went for Flamethrower right away to take out the Bronzor with a crit. Alrighty then. Upon Skuntank's switch in, I now go for Reflect, which helps us a lot. They get the light screen up though, and I switch into Holy, our low punny, which actually survived in this run. But then we get crit by Night Slash down to less than a quarter, then Bronzong goes for Gyro Ball, but we survive it in the red, and Barry gets a crit body slam on Skuntank, but it didn't quite KO. I'm forced to switch, so I go into Felix, our new Perugly, and the Bronzor had gone for Confuse Ray, but Perugly has own tempo and can't be confused. Incredible! From here, we can KO Skuntank with Body Slam, and their Golbat gets hit by Body Slam and paralyzed, and it can't move afterwards, which means we can outspeed and take it out on the next turn. Now, since we've been focus firing on Jupiter's Pokemon, we can now cause Mars to have to 2v1 us, which makes the battle quite manageable, especially since we paralyzed her Perugly with Body Slam. No deaths on the commander battle for the first time, and we're prepared with our Clefable lead. Let's do this. I go for Reflect right away against Cyrus, and with the Light Clay item for longer duration, and amazingly we outspeed the Honchkrow, and it hits us with Dark Pulse for about a third. Feeling relatively safe and knowing we need them, I go for Stealth Rock here, which does extra damage to all of his Pokemon. Knowing we should survive any attack he has with the Reflect up, I go for Thunderbolt, and it just barely doesn't KO, and then he hits us with Drill Peck, and we survive on 30 HP. Knowing he'll Super Potion, I go for the Thunderbolt to take him down. Realistically, I should have switched here to prepare for Weavile, but I still have a bit of a plan. I switch into Kong, and we get hit by Night Slash, but no crit. Now here's the key. Ambipom is the one thing that we have, and possibly one of the only things in the game that can outspeed Weavile. So I go for Insect Plate Boosted U-Turn, which we taught to it via TM, and it actually kills. Not only that, but we can now choose what we want to pivot into next, and knowing he only has Gyarados and Crobat, I send in Harvey, our new Girafferig. He chooses Crobat, and he outspeeds us and hits us with Confuse Ray, and then we hit ourselves in Confusion. Not good. He then uses Air Slash to bring us below half, and we hit ourselves in Confusion again. That ruins everything. I'm forced to switch here, so I go into Perugly, and he hits us with Bite. He then hits us with Cross Poison to below half, after which we hit him with Body Slam, and we get the Paralysis. Now that means we can outspeed him and take him down. Gyarados comes out next, and unfortunately it does have Intimidate, which makes Perugly kind of useless. However, we do have Charm, which seems to be our only hope. I use Charm, and he uses Aqua Tail, which we can now survive on 21 HP. Unreal. 
From here, I can now switch into Holy, who gets hit by Ice Fang on the switch, but with the attack lower, it doesn't do much, and now we can hit him with two returns to take him down and finally, finally beat Cyrus. Three times getting past the seventh gym in this challenge, and we finally did it, and Deathless too. Kong was an absolute clutch choice. Finally getting to move on past this part of the game feels incredible, and we can get our last encounter, unless we miraculously get a Munchlax somehow, a chatot from Route 222, which we nicknamed Twitter. You guys should follow. I was literally joking around with the chat that we'll never need to use that thing, but shortly before the 8th gym, we accidentally ran into a fisherman, and he started with a Gyarados while we had Lopunny out front. I switched into Clefable, and we got crit and frozen by Ice Fang, so I couldn't get the Reflect up. Since we don't have Thunderbolt on anything else, I had to stay in, and we stayed frozen and get hit by Hydro Pump, and another critical hit. After taking it out with Lopunny, he sent out another Gyarados, and I switched into Perugly, and got crit yet again by Aqua Tail, and taken down. Absolutely unbelievable. Three crits and a freeze. That was a very valuable team member, too. With that loss behind us, we face Volkner, the last gym leader, and to be honest, we swept through him quite cleanly with Ambipom with Dig and the Soft Sand item, along with Return, too. The thing is, with Volkner, if you outspeed him, you're pretty much set to go since his main thing is speed. With all eight badges acquired, it's time for the Pokemon League. First up is Eren, the Bunk-type Elite 4 member. He leads with a Dustox as I lead with Clefable. Knowing the big threats on his team are Drapion and Heracross, I decide to go for Reflect right away, and then we get Toxic, but since Clefable has Magic Guard, it doesn't matter much. I then set up Stealth Rock, which is really devastating for his team, and then he starts double teaming, but we land a Flamethrower. I switch into Chatot here preemptively, knowing his Heracross could come out next, and I have the choice specs on Chatot from Celestic Town, so after a miss and getting toxic again, we use Chatter to take him down. He sends in Drapion next, however, since it has Ice Fang, presumably, and since he set up Light Screen, I go into Kong, who, after getting hit by X Scissor, is able to do big damage with Dig, then we U-turn into Baby Girl so we can get the Reflect back up, since Heracross will likely come in next. I then switch into Chatot, and Drapion went for Aerial Ice on the Switch, and I was like, yay, not Ice Fang, but he got the crit. Ouch. With Toxic wearing us down, I'm forced to switch into Giraffe Rig, who's able to take it down with Thunderbolt. From there, thanks to the Stealth Rocks doing big damage, we can then Thunderbolt Beautifly, Vespaquin goes down in one Thunderbolt as well, and Heracross is taken down by a super effective Stab Psychic. A tougher battle than expected for sure, as we really had to pivot effectively around Drapion and Heracross. Up next is Bertha, the Ground-type Elite 4 member. She starts with a Quagsire, so I lead with Clefable. Clefable has Magical Leaf, which can't miss, which is perfect since the most that Quagsire can do is Double Team, Slam, Protect, or Sandstorm. I use a Reflect right away, then can four times effective Magical Leaf, and it actually doesn't KO her, but another couple after the full restore does the job. She then sends in Pseudowoodo next, and Magical Leaf does over half, but then she hits us with Hammer Arm for big damage, after which we can take it out. In comes Golem next, which is a four times effective one Hikeo with Magical Leaf, and Whiskash then survives one and hits it with Rock Slide, which does very little with Reflect Up, so I decide to switch in Kong here preemptively to prepare for her Hippowdon. However, she ended up full restoring, which I didn't think she'd do from that range. Regardless, Kong is able to two hit KO it, although we did lose the Reflect because of that. Her final Pokemon is the Hippowdon, and I'm actually a bit scared of this thing at the moment. It has Crunch, so we can't go into Giraffe Rig, and Stone Edge, so we can't use Chatot. Yet, those are our only viable special attackers at the moment, and it has high physical defense. I have no other choice, so I hit it with Return, which does just under half, and then we get hit hard by Earthquake to just 22 HP in the red after Sandstorm. I then use U-Turn here to bring it below half and switch in Holy, and her Citrus Berry activates. From here, she hits us with Crunch, and gets the defense drop. No way, now we can't stay in. Our only option left is to switch into Giraffe Rig now, and she goes for Crunch again, and gets the crit to immediately bring him down. Why? How is our luck this way? That was the only thing that could have taken us down. I send Kong back out to try to go for U-Turn and bait the Earthquake, and we successfully do it, meaning Chaton gets a free switch and can take her down with Choice Specs Hyper Voice. Holy, that was rough. Five deaths on the board. Next up is Flint, the Fire-type Elite Four member. Flint's team is looking kind of troublesome, but I go with our trusty Clefable lead for the Reflect, followed by Stealth Rock, which should be helpful. He goes for Sunny Day on the first turn, which is scary, then hits us with Flare Blitz on the next turn for just under half before we get the Rocks up. Now Clefable has no coverage against Rapidash, so I'm forced to switch into Kong, and he goes for Bounce, which is perfect. 
Now we can use super effective dig with the soft sand, and since we outspeed, we can go underground, he comes down for bounce, and then we pop back up to take him down. Nice. Infernape comes out next, and although this looks terrible, with Reflect Up, Mock Punch shouldn't do much, so I go for Return since Dig would be terrible since it has Earthquake. We bring it down to below half after it's Citrus Berry, and he did indeed go for Earthquake, which doesn't do much, so we can take him down on the next turn. Low Punny's up next, and we hit it with Return, and get infatuated by its cute charm ability, and then it uses Sunny Day. Due to the infatuation, I have to switch, so I go into our own low punny and he uses charm to lower our attack, but I still go for drain punch and it just barely doesn't KO. Knowing he'll full restore, I get Clefable back out and get our reflect back up after getting hit hard by fire punch. Since the sun went down, I went for flamethrower hoping he'd put it back up again, but he went for charm instead so I don't do much. I switch in Kong and get hit by the Fire Punch, which does a sliver. Now I can go for U-Turn to get some damage off and ward off the Infatuation by switching Holy in and go for Return to take it out. Steelix is sent in next, which caused some trouble with Holy and Kong, but I eventually risked the switch into Blissey for the super effective Ice Beam to take it down. This was a great switch because now his Drift Blim has no way of touching us, and a combination of Toxic and Ice Beam wears him down. A solid battle. The final Elite Four member is Lucian, the Psychic-type member, and I had planned to sweep through him with Giraffe Rig, but Jeffrey of course got KO'd, so I'm lost. I know I don't want this Mr. Mime to get Reflect or Light Screen up though, so I lead with Kong. Return just barely doesn't KO though, but thankfully he just went for Psychic, but it does do huge damage on us. After a full restore, we can take him down with a couple more attacks. Now here, I was really hoping Metacham would come out next for my plan, and it does, so I can use U-Turn to get some damage and pivot out of there. Now Metacham is a huge threat for our team with Drain Punch, but I switch into Twitter, and he goes for Fire Punch. Incredible. Thank God. Since it doesn't get recovery, I can now use Chatter to take it down. Alakazam comes out next, and Blissey serves as a perfect counter since it only has special moves, so I can set up Light Screen, and since Blissey can't use Toxic due to Alakazam's Synchronize ability, I switch into Holy so we can take it out with Return. Our Light Screen wears off, and he sends in Giraffe Rig here. I use Return for good damage, then Psychic brings us to a third, and we can take him down with one more turn. His final Pokemon is Bronzong, which is actually scary at this point. I switch into Clefable, and it hits us way harder than expected with Earthquake. Now I can use Reflect and use a couple super effective flamethrowers, but it barely survives, then crits Clefable with Earthquake. I can't believe this. I cannot believe how many times we're getting crit. Baby girl goes down. With four Pokemon remaining, three of which are at low health, and with no super effective moves, this was a rough ending to the battle, and he used another full restore too, and Chatot got taken down by a Psychic as well. This sacrifice lets us safely switch in Blissey though, and we froze Bronzong with Ice Beam, switched in Kong, and it stayed frozen for three turns so we could KO it with Shadow Claws. With three Pokemon left, it's time for the final battle, Champion Cynthia. I use up the remainder of our rare candies that we got from Pickup on Ambipom, come up with sort of a strategy, and went for it. Let's see how this goes. She leads with Spiritomb, and since it's a special attacker, our only answer is Blissey, who I attached the Light Clay to. I set up Light Screen right away to avoid her embargo, and she indeed uses it after we outspeed her. Now we can hit it with Toxic, and this is a very slow stall with Poison and Ice Beams, with us barely losing any health despite her full restore at one point. She next sends in a massive threat, Lucario. Her only super effective move is Special, or a Sphere, but Blissey can't do any damage against it and will need it for later, so I switch into Holy. It just went for Psychic, which is perfect, but it got a crit. I have no words, we needed Holy so desperately. Drain Punch does less than half now, and now she goes for Aura Sphere, which takes us down from that range. That crit was everything. Lucario does have Earthquake, but I figure we can now bait the Aura Sphere with Kong and use Dig, and it works, and we take him down. However, in comes Garchomp next. We have no choice. I go for Return, and it does less than half. Kong then miraculously survives Earthquake though, and I was hoping for a high roll return, but nope. Garchomp survives with a sliver, and we get taken down. Our final Pokemon is Big Egg, the Blissey, and the Garchomp even has Brick Break, but we survive it and can take it down with Ice Beam. Now my plan is still kind of working despite the crit earlier, since her remaining Pokemon are mostly special attackers, except she sends in Gastrodon next, which does have Earthquake and Stone Edge. 
What follows is an insane toxic stall with Blissey calculating our soft boils and light screens according to our power points, and the problem is Muddy Water kept lowering our accuracy and somehow she kept hitting stone edges too, but in the end we took down the Gastrodon with good health, but only two soft boils and three ice beams left, and we just barely don't level up. Luckily, her Milotic is a pure special attacker, but it did get a crucial Surf crit on us, which is not good at all, and it turns out she had a third full restore too. We eventually take it down with about two-thirds health and only one soft boiled and three ice beams left. In comes the Roserade, and on its very first sludge bomb, it gets the poison on us, and then we miss our ice beam. I have never seen luck this bad in my decades of playing Pokemon. I'm forced to go for the soft boil now, and then I go for light screen, and now it's time. I go for ice beam, she outspeeds us and hits us with sludge bomb, and we get crit again. No. Ice Beam does over half too, but now due to the poison and the crit, Blissey gets outsped and taken down in one more Sludge Bomb. We were one Ice Beam away. The amount of crits that we got in the Elite Four when we literally did not get one the entire time is absolutely insane. But you know what? After six attempts, including three going past the seventh gym, and with a monotype team that has no normal type super effective stab, I'm proud of us. We worked hard for that, and we definitely show that it is indeed possible. What a challenge this was. If you guys are looking for a hard Pokemon challenge, man, this is it. If you enjoyed the run, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button as it really does help a lot and grows our community. A huge thanks to my YouTube members and patrons who make these videos possible. If you'd like to support and get your name up here, the links are also down below. If you enjoy, drop a like down below to help the video out and leave a comment letting me know what kind of run we should do next and I'll see you guys for our next challenge video.